guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock on a Saturday, which means it's time for a Talk Magic. And today I'm going to be talking to you about somebody who has literally achieved the dream that many magicians wish that they could achieve, which is setting up their own venue to perform in. Uh, this person is an incredible magician, an incredible performer, and it's safe to say an incredible entrepreneur as well. I want to talk to him about everything he's achieved because it is absolutely inspirational and mind-blowing i am of course talking about the one and only tom bolton how are you doing tom i'm great how are you i'm good and first of all i want to say a huge congratulations uh for setting up the magic corner um that's awesome thank you uh, thank you no, it's a, yeah no, it's a little baby i love it so much and I've never been. I know I really want to go. Is that where you are right now? Is that the magic corner? Yes. Yeah, I thought I'd do it in here. Why not? Get the, that, ad, get the whole, whole look. That's yeah. brilliant. Well, a lot of people might not know who you are or might not have heard of the magic corner. So because of that, I want to kind of go into everything and talk about the whole lot and who you are and what the magic corner is and what led to you setting it up. Um, but first of all, for people that don't know anything about Tom Bolton or who you are, we're going to start at the very beginning and we're going to kind of start off with a bit of a, um, uh, you know, kind of a, an origin story. So my first question for you, Tom, how did you get into magic? It started when I was six. So it's been a while, been a long time. Uh, it's always been an interest, I guess. Uh, you know, I had my magic kit when I was younger and all that sort of same as everyone else. But, um, my main influence was my, uh, I think my mum's. Um, cousin Andy, uh, so he, he's just he. Um, I think my mum's cousin, but he uh, he showed me a trick when I was younger, and essentially he signed a card, and somehow that card appeared inside of my mouth, and it was great. It was the best thing I've ever seen, and I made him do it like three times, and he and he did, and uh, it was, and I just couldn't work it out, and um, I told him that I, I already had a bit of an interest in magic, so seeing that was great, uh, and would he teach me? And he didn't. He did not teach me. He, he told something else that was easier but he said your hands are too small you will not be able to do this trick uh but you know in a few years time if you you know get better and you practice and you actually uh, and he did he did teach me it which was great uh which is really cool and um but yeah that's kind of how it started and then from there i just kind of built it up it's always it's always been a hobby and i don't think it was until i left school that i kind of decided to take it seriously and um and that is because at the end of school when i was like finishing school I started working at Magic Box as well and um, started working at Magic Box the shop in Newcastle and okay. I uh, it, it was kind of there that I realized that magic can be a career because I think before then I just thought it was kind of just a hobby there was you know nothing else you can really do with it other than maybe perform a few weddings and stuff uh, but it was working at the shop at, and seeing professional magicians come in and out daily uh, that kind of realized oh this actually can be like career that I could do this for a living and nothing else which was kind of the turning point so it was kind of like working the magic box that kind of made, made, gave, gave me the realization of uh, wanting to so, become a magician full-time did you go straight into magic box from school working full-time at magic box pretty much yes yeah. so right so it started a Saturday job uh, whilst I was at school and then I left school and, and then yeah it, I think it went yeah it went full I went full-time <laughs> okay. when we moved to the new shop in Morpeth um, near Morpeth uh, yes, yeah, it was full time. Then I've kind of slowly gone part time, and then I don't, I no longer work there anymore because uh, of this. But, um, but yeah, no, it, it, was, wow. it was great. Okay. Well, let's break a few of those things down. So you said that it was kind of more of a hobby during school, and you started taking it seriously when you went to Magic Box. Did you start doing professional gigs in school, or did you start doing professional gigs once you started working at Magic Box? I, I think I started at school, but the, nothing, nothing big. It was kind of like you know, your, your family and fr fa uh, friends of friends sort of events that they'd be doing. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's how I started. That's how everyone starts as well. Um, but yeah, it, it started like that. So nothing nothing major. I did a few weddings kind of like towards the end of school, like sixth form sort of time. Um, but yeah, it, it kind of remained a hobby for, for the majority of school. I didn't really perform at school either. I know a few people kind of knew I was a magician of some kind, but yeah, I never really, I never really, I wasn't, I never got my cards out at school and I never really brought cards to school. It was always just a, a it was always just a thing that I liked to do when I was at home and, and, and I, I'd the occasional like gig and stuff, but yeah. Okay. And, and so obviously then you left school and you went to Magic Box. And yes. if 
you know, I, I worked at a magic shop and I, I don't know if you agree, but what I found is it makes you such a good magician in terms of performing and presenting because you've got to, you've yeah. got to perform that thing well enough to have people put their hand in their pocket and say, yes, I'll buy yeah. it. Um, yeah, and I, I think I think the knowledge as well you gain from working in a magic shop, just like not, not even just the knowledge of how tricks work, but also what sort of tricks work well and and um yeah just 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 how to be a magician i think more than anything else uh, i think i think constantly seeing tricks I, mean, I remember when i first started working in magic box i look i used to look at the wall of tricks and just think oh my, i'm gonna learn every single thing on that wall. i can't wait for it and then like a few years later when i was when i was to work in there i looked at that wall and i was like i i don't i don't want to learn it. all of those there's so many to learn i kind of I, I like to pick and choose kind of my favorites and just just focus on them um because i that's oh there's so much there's so much to learn um but yeah but I, as long as i think just working at work in the magic shop you just you do develop a really good understanding of the majority of how most tricks work and and stuff like that which i which i think is really useful well a couple of questions about that obviously um at magic box you have graham shaw who is one of the few magicians I know that literally does everything. He does illusion shows, he does kid shows, he does cabaret, he does close up, he does like literally you name it, he probably yeah. does it. Absolutely. Did, did you, and obviously I imagine you would have been working quite closely with Graham. Did you find that you gravitated towards one particular genre of magic or did you kind of go, right, I'm going to do kid gigs, I'm going to do illusion shows, I'm going to do it. I, I kind of when you started taking it seriously and you started working at Magic Box and you started doing gigs, what type of gigs were you doing and what type of gigs has that led to doing now? Definitely close up, I, I would I would say. Um, yeah, so yeah, I worked really close with Graham a lot and, and everyone else there as well. Uh, Chris who used to work there as well, but yeah, I worked really close with them and they they I think they major the majority of what they do is close up. Um, that's because I think there's way more demand for close up than there is for like somebody like a stage magician and stuff. So, so I definitely, I, I definitely went down the route close up and, and still am because even this show is like close up as well. Um, but I love stage magic. I love it. I, I, I really want to do. I, I wish there was more demand for it. Uh, I really want to do more stage stuff. Um, but close ups, close ups, the one really. There's just so there's so much demand for it. I, I, I do think close up is how magic's meant to be seen. You know, it is meant to be, it, you, you're meant to be doing tricks right under their nose that like, you know, the misdirection is, is, is so easy, you know, it's easier. Um, yeah, so I, I think magic is meant to be seen close up. So I did definitely go down the close up route. Uh, but yeah, I do love stage so much. That's amazing. And and so you started doing quite a lot of close up work, I imagine. You mentioned weddings and, and private parties, I'm assuming. And have you had, and although you say you want to do more stage magic, have you had experience? doing stage have you got a stage show is that something that you've got i do so i have a stage show uh, it's called grow up magic man um uh, basically about the way i basically create a, a, a bedroom on the stage my old old kids bedroom um i debuted at durham fringe last year uh and i'm, I'm taking it up to edinburgh fringe this year as well oh, wow my first time in edinburgh so I'm, well not edinburgh but at fringe uh, so i'm really excited for that i can't wait but yeah yeah so the, the, whenever there's a stage opportunity i do try and take it as much as i can uh i just wish there was more and yeah, but yeah, maybe 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 going down the corporate routes, um, like doing a bit of close up, also like a twenty minute spot on the stage. That's that's kind of the goal as well. Uh, but yeah, yeah, no, I, I do have a stage show. Yeah. That's perfect. So before we move on from Magic Box, one question yes. you mentioned yes. about how you looked at that wall and you said I'm going to learn everything, and then you went, oh, actually, it's impossible to. Yeah. As somebody who's worked in a magic shop and whose job is to sell people magic, have you got any advice for? Uh, 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 hobbyists and, and, and people that buy magic because the question I got on this channel over and over again Tom is oh my god I, I just spend so much money on magic and I buy it and I put it down in my room and I never learn it and then I move on to something else like do you have yeah. any advice on that sort of thing as somebody who's been literally surrounded by every magic trick yeah for a long period of time definitely the main thing is I remember even when I was a kid and I shopped a magic box before I worked there my main goal was to just have my money and go in and just buy as much as I can with that. Um, and you still get that. Even when I worked there recently, you, you still get that. And um, my main piece of advice is just choose one thing. Just, I mean, because people were coming in every week, like once a week, buying a new trick. 
um, and they buy like two or three tricks every week. The best thing to do is just, just buy buy one thing and learn that that one thing. Otherwise, you, as you say, you just you kind of read it over, you glance, and you're like, mm, it's not really, you know, it's, it's this is actually harder than I thought, and they just put it to one side and it's gone, it's forgotten. Um, so definitely just just buy one thing and start start with that and just just really really hammer in on that until you have it perfect, and then go back and get the next thing. Um, we also uh, maybe just find what you love the most. Like, there's so many card tricks out there. Um, and, and just to start small, you know, uh, I mean, I, we always recommended books in the shop because they are great. Uh, we try to, yeah, we, we, we do try to push books as much as possible because, I, I mean, like, as you said, like, uh, say you have 30 pounds. 30 pounds can buy your book with 30 tricks in or you can buy one gimmicks pack of cards for 30 pounds you know it's, it's like it's like the, the books are definitely the way to do it um yeah yeah just 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 that really just just really try and don't don't go don't go in with the thought of i need to buy as much as possible go in with the thought of let me buy one like hit one gem and really learn that and then, and then come back next week and get get something else or next month and get something else that's great advice really good advice so here's the million dollar question so yes. you left school you got a job at magic box everyone's yes. dream you know any kid that's watching this, that's at school, if they, if you said, oh, what would you like to do when you finish school? You could go and work full-time in a magic shop. That's like a lot of people's dreams right there. So you're in a magic shop. What was the goal? Was the goal, right, I'm in this magic shop. This is me set for the rest of my life. Or is it, was it always, you said that you started taking magic more seriously. Was it, hey, you know what? I'm going to use this as a springboard to become a professional magician. It was, it was more that, to be honest. Um, the, the, uh, like, yeah, working in the magic shop, it, to be fair, I, I never really thought, every time I was there, I never really thought of going any further. So when I, when I started a Saturday job, I didn't see myself going full time. I kind of I liked to just, 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 uh, just work a little bit. And then the, the ultimate goal was to focus on my career as a magician, like try and do weddings as much as possible, cooperate if I can. Um, but then it went full time, and it, it really helped. To be fair, like the amount oh, I, I don't know, how, the amount I learned at Magic Box is, is crazy. Just working in the Magic Shop, the amount you learn, just of the industry in general, is is mad. And um, so, so yeah, so it was always. So I went full time, but it, the goal was always it, it was never to work there the rest of my life. It was it was trying to it, yeah it was to kind of use that, learn them as much about the industry as possible, and then see how, where you can kind of take. And, you know, the magic career. Uh, and it took me, yeah, really. And that was my next question. So was the goal to own a magic bar or was that something that you kind of uh, happened later on? Like, or was the goal to be, uh, because when you think about going full-time as a magician, very few people think about owning a magic bar. I mean, there's very few of them in the UK. You've got Mark Bennett, you've got yourself, you know, you've got... Uh, uh, the guys up in North Wales at the Magic Bar. There's, but there's not that many. There's not that many at all. Was that yeah. always a goal, a pipe dream? Or or was it, hey, I want to become a professional magician and this dream yeah. happened later on? Yeah, well, it, it kind of was always always a plan in my mind. I had, even, even when I was really young, I had the Magic Corner, not that it was going to be called Magic Corner at the time, but it was, um, it was always an idea. The, the ultimate idea is, so, so essentially the Magic Corner, it, it is a bar, but you can't, Kind of just wandering off the street, so you have to book it. It's like it's it's like it's the show first, and then it's like a bar on the side. Um, and it was always a goal, but the original plan was just to book or just to find a space. I just wanted the the idea in my head was I just wanted this space where instead of just a magician standing at the front of the space doing a show, I wanted the room to feel like the show. So from the second they walk in, they they're in the show. If that kind of makes sense, I use like objects. Like a like a pack of cards, rather than just putting it on my pocket, it's 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 held by it's held by a hand on a shelf, you know that sort of thing, and just using just stuff like that. Um, so the original goal, I remember ages ago when when I wanted to start this, me and my mom walked around. So I live in Durham. Uh, we walked around Durham, and the original plan was just the it was going to be like the back room of a of a restaurant or like the spare room in a hotel or something like that. Just just I just wanted a space, so we wandered around Durham for. Hours just asking every cafe, every restaurant, like, do you have like a spare room? This is the idea, um, and just couldn't find anywhere, and just struggled up, walked past um, this place, which I'll, I'll show you around in a second. But um, yeah, yeah, just it was honestly, it was a struggle up finding it. But this was always the goal. The, the goal was 
my own sort of show as such that I could kind of put my name to and, and uh, kind of really create my own sort of sort of magic inside. That was that was definitely what it's for. That's fantastic. And we're going to talk about the the, uh, the magic corner in a minute, but before we do. <laughs> When you uh, talked about working at Magic Shop at uh, Magic Box, you said that you went part time and then you eventually left. Did you go part time because gigs started coming in and you were getting so busy working as a magician, you were kind of like something's got to give, and then that's ultimately what led you to leave? Was that the? Yeah, so it was actually because of because of here. Uh, this started to pick up. It started to get busy. So um, the, the the main sellers for this are uh, weekends, and that was kind of when I was working a magic box so that kind of it wasn't working out uh, in terms of time because I really wanted to do as many shows as I could in here uh, so I went from it was a, I used to like I think I worked for Thursday Friday Saturday uh, when I was when I was part-time then I, I even moved that to like a I think a Tuesday Wednesday Thursday or something so it kind of always just kind of this this did start to get in the way a little bit a little bit more so I, I still tried as much as I could to be a magic box because I loved working there uh, but yeah eventually this just got it just got too much doing both um, so, so that's why. Uh, but yeah, it was because it was because of the end. Really. That's amazing. That's great. Okay. And do you find? So, well, actually, I'll ask that question in a minute. Let's let's start here. So, mm -hmm. where did you set up the magic corner? Um, because I remember going to Magic Box shortly after COVID ended, mm -hmm. and me and Ryan went there, and you were there, and we were chatting. And you'd show me po you'd show me flyers for the magic corner then. So you'd set it up before it was set yeah. up shortly after COVID ended. It must have been. It, it, was, was, it was set up about three months before COVID started. Oh my <laughs> god, talk about bad timing for that. It was awful timing. It was for something that that, that it, it requires a group to meet up in a small space. It was terrible. I opened I so I, I opened I got the place like mid 2019 and I opened I think December 2019 uh, and I didn't do I, I didn't have many shows because it was really new so I did a few and then I think COVID kicked off maybe that following February uh, in 2020 yeah, it was, so it was beginning of March was, I think yeah it was just horrible timing like really timing really bad timing but in in some ways and I tell everyone this, it did kind of help because when when COVID was was no longer a thing when it kept when it was kind of ending people were aching for something to do things to do with their family and friends and and this was kind of it was still new so people we, people kind of gave it a go they, they like they were like oh there, there's something we've never done before something brand new in durham we we can we're free now let's let's try it and 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 a lot of people did and a lot of people also met up with their family for the first time in here as well which was really nice it was kind of like a really nice mm -hmm. scene the reunions and stuff and then on the show to them which is, yeah, it was really nice so in some ways it did help sell it uh, at the end uh, but yeah but I, I think I closed for a year and a half to two years um, which oh, was wow. which was terrible once once opening uh, but because it was a, a I did manage to su secure some um, funding to just to keep it afloat just you know to pay the rent and the bills and stuff which was good oh wow and obviously now since then it's gone from strength to strength d d um what am I trying to say here? Having a ve having a venue can be quite a difficult thing, and obviously yeah. you're relying on people booking shows for tickets. I imagine you do private hire as well. Has it been a kind of a difficult learning experience figuring out how to actually make this yeah. work? You know, has this yeah, been a lot? There's so much. I I I don't even think I realize how much that actually would be by myself. Um, the the main thing for me is just 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 the little things that you forget about. So for me, the hardest thing for me is social media, uh, which is strange because I, I I'm on my phone quite a lot, but <laughs> keeping on top of the social media is almost impossible because there's so much other things to do. So I, I like I do so every, so I do everything myself. Uh, my parents help me a lot, uh, but I do the like the majority myself. So like the drinks runs and the and stocking shelves and, and you know learning the tricks, getting everything in selling the tickets, doing the admin and stuff and the website. Yeah, so I do it all. Uh, so I, I just forget about the social media. And it's really annoying because like social media would really help sell it. But uh, I just, yeah, I just forget it's there. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's it's, it's a lot more than I, I thought it would be. Uh, but not nothing too major. Because it's, it's not, it's quite a simple business plan. You know, there's nothing 
really hard. So there's a lot of things that I've found along the way and learned along the way that, that made stuff that made things like so much easier. So I use a, a there's a great booking platform that I use, which is actually it was designed for escape rooms. But I think someone actually came to the show before I used this and said, Oh, do you know that um we own an escape room, we own, we have this like booking site, you should look into it. And I did, and it was perfect. It was like exactly what I needed just to to let the tickets flow in and have that max number of ten and a minimum number of four and oh, it, it, it works a dream. So yeah, it, it wasn't even that much as well. So yeah. So Debbie, yeah, I've learned so much along the way, and especially to a business as well. Just just little things like licensing and insurance and all that. It, it just you, you kind of I didn't know much about it. I, I very much jumped into it. I didn't I didn't really I know you meant to like with these business things like really <laughs> plan it out, like strategically plan it out. I did not. I literally I just got I I started renting the place, I jumped straight into it. I was like, right, what's next? And I did it kind of like step by step. To be honest, it, it I did take a while to open when I first opened, when I first got the place in like mid 2019. It took a good four, five, six months to actually get it going. Um, but yeah, I just I I, I do that. I, I I do take things that just one at a time and just learn. I like to learn as I go. But you do. I think that's the best way of learning. You know, getting stuck in. And and diff- I, no, I completely agree with you. And I can you know, I mean, I think you've done the right thing, just jumping straight in because it's worked. You know, and then some. Which is fantastic. Yeah. What made you decide? So, the, the, from speaking to you, the format here is you can't really just walk in off the street. You have to book a time slot. You come and watch a show, and I imagine you have numerous time slots through the day or in the evening. Yeah. Um, what made you go down that route? Because obviously, different magic bars have different ways of doing things. You know, you've got people like Mark Bennett, who just has a bar, but he sells set show times. Yeah. You've got people like. Um, you know, the Slights Bar in Bath where you just walk in and you just rock up and you can just be in there in time and just watch shows. Yeah. And, you know, different... I, I, I've been to a lot of Magic Bars and they've all got different concepts. This mm-hmm. feels a little bit like... Um, is it the small space in Wales? The uh, uh, Yeah, yeah. Well, the, my main... My main um, uh, uh, what, what would you call it? Influence, I guess? Inspiration was um, Six Impossible Things, Josh, Joshua J's show. I love that. Mm-hmm. I love the concept. Yeah, I, re- I remember. So I, I already had the idea for this, and then seeing him do that on Broadway or off Broadway, um, I was like, "Oh, this, this, this works. This can work." So that that was my main inspiration, to be honest. The whole just concept of it just being a show. You can get a drink, but it's just a show. The only reason for the bar is just it, it, it kind of it generates that little bit more money um, uh, in terms, and it's just it's quite enjoyable. Like I, I don't think I think it would get a not awkward if people came and they couldn't have a drink, but it's, it's nice to be sat watching a show holding a drink as well. Uh, it's just something to, to sip on uh, just during the show. So that's main, that's the main reason for the bar. If it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't even have it. I, I kind of prefer just the show. Um, the main reason for not opening it as a bar is I didn't want to be here full time. I didn't want to be here from like 11 o'clock till you know, midnight or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, so it was, it was kind of just, I, 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 I like the idea of just the soul kind of the show really that makes sense so how long is the show and how many time slots do you have in a day yeah so from walking in to walking out it's about 90 minutes in general um mm-hmm. so essentially people walk in uh, this is the first room so they sit here uh, there's like there's two in there there's three two there's two seats here as well uh, and uh, i i'm in the so that's a little hatch i'll show you in a second that's a little hatch but that's where the bar is in there so i serve drinks through there that and then usually you know that takes about five ten minutes if that and then I kind of get cracking on with the show. So I have an announcement that plays with them. They have instructions to do before I even start. So there's things for them to do. And, um, and then the first half's about maybe like half an hour-ish, maybe a little bit more. Um, it kind of depends on the group, really. Uh, you know, if they're, quite, if they're quite loud and quite rowdy, then it might take a little bit longer. Uh, but if I can just, if I, or if I just do, and then, you know, you have a bit of crack with them. Uh, if it's just kind of quite a quiet group, then you kind of just flow through the show, which is also really nice. Um, so yeah, that and then there's an interval uh, where usually it's t- it's usually people are kind of like here with the drink, so they will get another one. Um, and then we head downstairs uh, into this little cabaret sort of parlor room, and again there's about another about half an hour to thirty five minutes, and then we end, and then everyone goes, and then yeah, and then I do uh, so it's about ninety minutes, and depending on the day, I do about three to four a day, uh, not anymore actually. So I used to do four on a Saturday. It's gradually built up. So 
Halloween and Christmas are the busiest times. Uh, so, because I, I do like a special Halloween show, and that usually I I, I sometimes push four shows a day. Uh, but at the moment, I think the most comfortable is like two or three. So Wednesday, Thursday, well, there's three every day essentially that can be booked. So it's like a four o'clock, a six o'clock, six fifteen, or something like that, and uh, uh, eight thirty. And then the weekends a little bit, a little bit earlier. So it's, yeah, one start at one on Saturday. Wow. Yeah, so three or four a day usually. That's amazing. Great. And uh, okay, uh, do you find um, that? Uh, of course, obviously, as well as having the magic corner, you also are a full time pro. Mm -hmm. do, do you find that having the magic corner can sometimes affect bookings that might come in as a you know, hey. I want to book you for this big corporate event and blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. I can't. Sorry, I've got a show at the Magic Corner. Is it, it does. How do you balance that all out? So unless someone's booked something like that pretty far in advance, I usually have to turn it down. Um, so the Magic Corner, uh, I, because it's only 10 people per show, it does get booked up quite fast and quite, um, quite quick. So I, yeah, so to be honest, I actually do find myself having to, I turn down quite a lot of, of weddings and stuff. I, well, I don't, I pass them on to uh, other magicians often, but yeah, I find myself having to turn down quite a lot because this gets booked out quite far in advance. Because uh, I, always, I always have to book like, more tickets off if I can. So, um, I mean, you know, you know it's like some people like really want to come, but they find it so hard to get a group together or find a time that everyone can do. So I usually put tickets off like three, four, sometimes five months in advance if I can. So yeah, I don't know. I, it, it it has affected it, but in the same way, um, it's fine because I, I do still enjoy this, and I, I only live like five minutes that way, so it's really close to my house as well. So it's really, it's really. I, I always make sure the show is set. So like after the show, so I, as soon as I walk in, I just get changed. And it's, it's kind of ready to go. Turn the lights on and stuff. So it's 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 it's, it's yeah. I don't do as I definitely don't do as many um, close up gigs as I would like to or can but uh but yeah if, if this is books then it's fine at least i'm doing something you know that makes sense that makes sense that's awesome and i imagine that there's going to be a lot of people that come back like repeat clients yeah. like hey they've seen the show now they're bringing more friends or they're hiring it out for something so do you have to like constantly be changing your material or do you have because you're talking about doing like you know, like about an hour's worth of material. If you've yeah. got people that are coming back, like you're going to be burning through a lot of stuff there, Tom, right? Yeah. So I actually do. So if there's a theme, uh, the show does change quite heavily. So, so I have a general show that's just like kind of the main show. And then it gets to, when it gets to September, it turns into the Halloween show where we do like a little seance and stuff downstairs, um, which is fun. Uh, that's September to November. And then that's almost straight into the Christmas show, which is again, similar to the normal one but 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 pretty different as well there's a lot of differences in it um more christmas themed i guess so yeah so so it does if there's a theme it changes heavily the general show i tweak every so often so this, the layout's the same there's a good chunk there's some things that will never leave the show like i've done it in there's some like staple pieces that i'm, I'm so proud of and so happy with that i just i can't I can't take it out it's just too and, and a lot of people come back bringing friends and they say oh are you are you doing this and and i say yeah and they're like oh great because i wanted to show my friends um in terms of people coming back it does happen quite a lot but not often the same group often like two two have come back but they've brought other people as well and i, I always tell people because like a lot of people ask the same question at the end of the show like oh do you change it we've got to come back and i say so it does so i tweak it so if you come again you definitely see unless it's like a theme if you come to the same show again, you'll see maybe one or two things new. So I always tweak it and, and throw some stuff in and take some stuff out quite a lot. Um, but I always say, if you bring other people, the, the beauty of magic, you'll find yourself watching them as well. So if you know what's about to happen, you will, you will watch their face. And there's something completely different in that moment. You almost feel in on the trick. And it's really, it's a really nice, because that's what, that's what we love. You know, we, when 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 you when they reveal their hand and there's a clear block in their hand, I'm looking at their face. I'm not looking at that block. I'm looking at their face, and it just you just watch it light up. And I and I always tell people that I always say if you come again, just watch people's faces, and it it'll feel like a different show. Um and yeah, so so a lot of people come back and yeah and, and do that. It's nice. 
Oh, that's amazing. That's fantastic. And I imagine, like, it's the perfect environment in which to perform in, really, in that it's close up, but it's a formal show. So you're not having to, like, run around in cocktail receptions, fighting to grab yeah. people's attention. They're there to yeah. see you. But it's yeah. also the place where you can do close up. It's not like you're so far away that you have to, like, yeah. focus on, on different material. So you've really got the ability to perform any close-up trick, really. Gotcha. And then, because you've also got your own venue, which because you've got your own venue, it means that um, you've got, uh, because you've got your own venue, it means that you've also got the ability, like you said, to set stuff up, like a hand holding a pack of cards. Yeah. And yeah. So I suppose my question is, you've got the ability to pretty much do anything. Yeah. Like, very few people have the have, have that opportunity. Yeah. Like, yeah. how do you select the material? Like, is it all cards? Is it a mixture? Do, have you got that thing rigged up with threads and magnets everywhere? So there's stuff happening, like, that normal magicians couldn't do because you're in yeah. control of the environment? Like, yeah. what approach did you take with that sort of thing? So, um, essentially, when I first started the show, I did I did pretty much do um, kind of my, my set. That I, so upstairs is very informal. Downstairs is a lot more formal. So upstairs is very sleight of hand heavy in terms of like, there's a lot of card tricks. Um, I, to be honest, I even set up things that I don't use. Like there's loads of gimmick things in this room that if, if I do get a whole group who are new, I will just try, you know, I'll just pick it up and just do it. The main thing for me is I, I do want the show to flow. So I'm not, I'm not a big fan of doing like a trick and then another trick and a trick. I, I need things to make sense. Um, so, so that's something I work on quite a lot. Uh, but yeah, no, I yeah, I can, yeah, anything, anything works. Anything that's close up works, really. Um, as long as it, as long as it makes sense, it has to make sense um, for me. But yeah, no, any, anything works. So, there's, so the first half, there's a lot of card stuff. I do like a multiple selection where they, they each at the start of the show pick a card from a bowl uh, and they sign it, and then again, that's like a souvenir that each of them get that they can take home. So find the cards. And, yeah, there's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of in influence things as well, you know, things that, um, uh, you know, like inject, you know, for example, they think of a celebrity. So I do that in the show and I, I and I, I almost tell them that the room has influenced them. Um, even if it hasn't, I just, just say it. So then it, even that even gets them like looking around the room, like looking for things like what could I have been influenced by? If they think of a card, you know, what's telling me that card um a lot of people think the show is yes yeah, kind of like very darren brown-esque um sort of thing i like i, you know, I love darren so uh, any, anything that could influence them in the room uh, I, I love that concept so that's upstairs and then downstairs is very much more less cards more them more mind reading more pk touch sort of thing so yeah that's amazing so here's a question for you and i'm really interested about this from a marketing point of view yeah so I imagine the summer's very busy for you. Yeah. Because obviously, tourism. Uh, but you also just said that you're taking your show up to Edinburgh. So, yes. question, two questions on this. One, yeah. obviously, in order to go up to Edinburgh, you're shutting the show down. Yeah. Um, you're, or you're shutting this down temporarily. Was that a difficult decision to make? And secondly, as a follow-on question to that, mm -hmm. when you're marketing the Magic Corner, is it marketed as the Magic Corner or is it marketed as Tom Bolton is performing for you? Like you think yeah. of Russ Brown at the House of Secrets in Blackpool, yeah. it's Russ Brown's House of Secrets. But you look at Smoke and Mirrors, for example, it's just Smoke and Mirrors. Mark might not be there. The reason yeah. I'm asking that is, are you in a, in a position to be able to have guest artists come in and go, you know what, you can you can keep the, the you know, X, Y, Z from this. Yeah. You you run like what do you have you're a very smart business person i can tell you wouldn't be in the position you are if if if, if you weren't so you've got to have thought this sort of thing through like i'd love to know your thought process on this so yeah so edinburgh edinburgh's been a a goal for a while sort of like so i've been doing this for like four years and i was happy to kind of doing this every every summer so yeah edinburgh's always been a goal and now that i feel like i i, I would i would never do Edinburgh if I didn't feel like I was ready for it, or I didn't feel like I had a show that was ready for it. I didn't I wouldn't just go and just try or something. So yeah, so Edinburgh this year was is definitely is definitely a bit of a plunge. It's 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 to be honest, 
as a business as a business idea, it's not a great idea doing it. Um, but it was it's more just a kind of I so yeah, so I feel like I'm doing Edinburgh because I feel like I've got a show that's ready for Edinburgh now. Um I am just closing the magic corner at the moment. Uh the ultimate goal. Yeah, so, so well yeah, so I'm closing the magic corner and doing Edinburgh, but mainly because Edinburgh's just been a massive goal of mine. I really, really want to tick it off. And I feel like if I if I leave it another year, I just I just, again it'll go on. I, I feel like I just had to plunge into it and jump into it. So that's that's what I've kind of done this year. Mm -hmm. In terms of yeah, marketing the magic corner, I, I did just start it off as just it was just the magic corner and like I had I didn't really have my name many places in the room. And then so the main thing that made me change it to it's now the magic corner or Tom Bolton presents the magic corner, the magic corner dash Tom Bolton magician on Go on Google is that at the show, but because I wasn't doing many gigs, because this was getting booked out quite far in advance, I, I wasn't doing many gigs. And I used to have two Google things. I used to have a Tom Bolton magician Google, Google thing page and the magic corner Google thing. And the magic corner was getting all these really nice sort of um, like five star reviews, and the Tom Bolton magician wasn't. It wasn't getting any reviews because I wasn't doing you know your weddings and your any things like that. So I feel like I was really missing out. So if, if someone would search Tom Bolton magician, it would literally it would, it would have, it would have zero views next to it. And I was like, oh, but the magic corner, which is essentially kind of me as well, was getting these nice reviews. So that was actually the reason that I changed it to the Magic Corner um, dash Tom Bolton magician mm. is because, um, yeah, I, 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 I got rid of the Tom Bolton Google thing, deleted it and just had, had to use the Magic Corner as me uh, just, to, just to kind of get those reviews for myself and stuff. And so that, yeah, so I do actually, I do push it as, as Tom Bolton presents the Magic Corner now. I didn't used to, but it, it, a lot of people told me that I should. Um, uh, so yeah, so I did. Uh, but as you say, because like like Russ Brown, House of Secrets, and uh, I think uh, you know Jamie Allen's uh, Illusionarium, that sort of thing. So like it's like it, it is a thing, and I I never wanted to do it. It, it wasn't like a, it, I I always thought oh, it's, it it doesn't it doesn't need it. But then loads of people said you should try it, and I, I, so I tried it, and it has made a difference. I've noticed a lot of people kind of recognize me more, um, and I I really do kind of want to get my name out there as much as possible, as well as the Magic Corner. Um, so yeah, so I've kind of combined the two now. And would you ever consider having other people in there, or is that a difficult proposition to think of? Because I mean, I run an entertainment agency, and the hardest yeah. thing for me when I first started the entertainment agency was thinking, "Oh my God, I've got this brand, and now other people are going out, and I've got no control over their performance. Yeah. I've got no control over anything. What am I going to do if they do a bad job?" And it. Yeah. it something that plagued me for such a long time um i, I imagine that that's something that would go through your head even it more. Has. It's, it's something i've given a lot of thought um in, like at some point i'd actually really like to pick your brain on it um yes. like your your um uh, your history in it but um it's it's something that i definitely thought about and a lot of, a, a good few magicians have asked as well and i've currently said no but for the future possibly i think the main thing is it's it is it's a show for 10 people so it's not it's it, it's i wouldn't call it a like a big opportunity but like if someone came in just to do one show because it's 10 people you know if i got someone in for like a, a day but like just to do one like if they if they got in touch with me and said oh can i do a spot at the magic corner it's not so much that it's not really how the magic corner works um because it's only 10 people per show so it's not so much a spot that you can just do it would be more fully like full-time sort of thing uh, definitely something they do like a takeover about. weekend, couldn't they? You could have somebody in and go, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. The weekend is being taken over by blah. Yeah, yeah, that's the goal. The main thing for me is, um, and it it it, it sounds it, it it doesn't it sounds bad, but it's it, as you say, it's just looking for that that right person. Because the thing about this show is, it's not just you're not just performing the show. And I know so many magicians who who would be great, who would just do the magic so well, but. The main thing is, from the minute they walk in to the minute they walk out, you're with them constantly. Even when you're not doing the show, when you serve them the drinks, you have to chat to them. You have to, you have to do small talk. You have to, you have to, you have to be someone. You have to be this group's friend for an hour and a half, and that's that's, that's, that's quite a hard job, you know. It, like performing the show is quite easy, but then you also have to go from that zone of your performance mode to just, just you. You just have to be, you have to be chatty. You have to be 
um, nice and stuff like that. And that's that's the that's 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 the hardest bit. Like performing the show is is a breeze, you know. It's like it, it's it's up here. It's like you you almost go into this completely new character. You just go into this zone, but you have to keep that character throughout the whole time that they're here. Because um, and that that's that's what I'd be scared about when I, when I get other people involved. Is just c can they handle the the constant being with this group? Mm. You know what I mean? So that's um, that that's my main uh, worry. But it's definitely a, a plan. It's definitely it's definitely a future plan. Uh, I know I'm in talks with a few magicians who would like to put on a show here. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean the main goal for me is that they, oh, I think uh, we'd probably get into this a bit later. But my ultimate goal is to kind of maybe franchise it a little bit. I wouldn't mind one in a few other cities uh, like York. Well, actually, I'm so glad you that was going to be my next question. Was it, yeah. Was the, Which is the old, oh, let's, oh. let's talk about that because yeah. you, here's the thing. How old are you, Tom? If you don't mind me asking, 24. 20, you make me sick, right? Okay, so you're 24 years old, you you have your own very successful um uh business. Uh, you perform, you, you're going to the Edinburgh Fringe, you've got you've got the magic corner. I mean, you're living the dream, buddy, you really are. Um, but I can tell that, like I said before, in order to get to where you are. You have to be goal driven. You have to be ambitious. You have to be entrepreneurial. Yes. Yeah, what's, yeah. what's What's the goal? Not just the goal in terms of a business point of view, from a magic corner point of view, but from Tom Bolton's point of view. What are your magical bucket list items that you want to hit that you haven't yeah. hit? We're talking about the fringe, but what else? Is, tell Tell me everything that you're wanting to achieve moving forward. It's definitely fringe. Uh, I love so the ultimate goal for the magic corner. It, it wasn't for a while, but only recently I've started thinking about it. Is to is to franchise it. Is to have the magic corner Durham. So it's coming to the magic corner Durham, but then have the magic corner York, the magic corner London, that sort of thing. And it, it, it's kind of shown that it works. Like Durham's, not, it's not a busy city. You know, it gets a decent amount of tourists, but it's not. It's not busy, and it it it, it it's worked. Um, so I think if you if you if it was to open one in, in, in a bigger city like more touristy city, then it would it, it would work as well. And um, so the, the ultimate goal is to have one in in these nice places like so. I think that I think the next goal is maybe York. I'd love a magic corner in York, um, and I, I'd love to. I think the main goal would be for me to move to York and do the show for like a year, and get someone else to do this one. That would be that would be the main goal. Um, on the shambles in York will be great. <laughs> just mm -hmm. stuff like that, just little little hidden gems just in York. So yeah, so the other goal is that it's to make is to open a few more of these. It's just I have no idea where to start. Like it's one of those that like I very much jumped into this, but that's a whole other ball game. I I I am starting fresh, I'm starting from the beginning. I, I don't know how how to even get it going. So that's well, the ultimate goal. You should you should go to the franchise show in London. Every year right. they have a massive yeah. show called the franchise show where they have experts in franchising giving advice on how to set up your own franchise, what you should do, the pitfalls, yeah. the pros, the cons. It's a free event you should go to. It runs over two days. You should uh, go to it. Yeah, well, 100%. Um, yeah, that sounds great. So, yeah, so, so that's, kind of the, that's kind of the goal for this. For me, I love the I, – I, so my, I love magic, but my, my other obsession is theatre. Love just obsessed with theatre. I, I, you know, I, I try to go to the theatre. Anything that comes up north, I will go see. And I'll, I'll, I often go to London. I can't go to London, but I'll see the show. Uh, I, I love the idea of consulting on a show. So I, I, I did kind of recently. So the, the pantomime in um, Durham, it's not a massive pantomime, but it's it's, it's big. And they, they got me and uh, my friend Corey uh, in this year to to just consult just like say oh they gave us a script said oh can you add any magic to this um and that's been a bucket list for this time for a while like getting in on i love the i love doing shows but there's something about being behind the scenes as well which i really enjoy so i think it's just such a fun process so that was a that was a big bucket list this time for me but i'd like to expand that more and just work behind the scenes on shows not just magic shows but like even like musicals and just just kind of just put put in there just kind of you know this would look great and, and this is how you do it um and we did we did that for the gala this year we we, we designed a really nice um it was cinderella we designed a really nice sort of idea for the carriage appearance uh, and and they did it and they pulled it off i mean we just kind of gave them the idea and said this is how you'll do it uh, but they they pulled it off and it looked great um so just being in the audience and seeing that on, on such a large scale 
was just, oh, that, it, it felt so good. So I'd love to go down that room a lot more. Um, in terms of performing, yeah, just, 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 I'm not really that bothered about where I'm performing. Um, you know, I'm not, I don't have any dreams of LA or even Vegas, really. I think, oh, the ultimate goal would be the Magic Corner on the West End. Oh, wow, that, yeah, that'd be great, that'd right? Be great. I love the West End, so if I if I could, even if it, it doesn't have to be a big show, even just this, even if it's not on West End, like off West End or whatever, just something, I guess, in London would be fantastic. I, I think that's maybe the ultimate goal. Um, but yeah, that's it, really, yeah. Consulting, oh. working on, just working, working in theatre in general. I love the idea. So, would you say that um, franchising the Magic Corner and doing more with the Magic Corner is probably more important to you than performing your own show somewhere? So, for example, let me ask, let me throw your hypothetical here. Um, uh, some of the best magicians that I know that are very, very successful at what they do got their start at the Edinburgh Fringe. People like Tom Crosby, yes. uh, people like Pippa Magic Dragon, you know, all these, all these sort of people. What and and you know as well as me, uh, there's agents there constantly. What what would happen if you were doing your show, an agent saw it and contacted you afterwards and said, "Hey, we want you to do a tour, you know, a, a six month tour. Um, we'll promote it around all the theaters. Your show is amazing. We want you to do this tour. It's going to take six months of hard work to get it together. Then you're going to spend six months on the road. Yeah. What would what would you do within that hypothetical? Would you go, okay, this is too good an opportunity. I'm doing this, but you couldn't." It, that has to happen straight away. You you've got no time to put somebody yeah. in at the magic corner. Like what, what what would you do? I know it's a difficult question, but it is. Yeah. The yeah. So I I, I often think about this. Like if, if a massive opportunity came along, I, I couldn't say no. I, it's it's one of those things that like as you say, it's like I think a lot of magicians have these bucket list items, and and, and a tour is definitely one for most. So if that if that sort of thing happened, I couldn't say no. I'd have to do it. Uh, in terms of this. Um, yeah, if it was a case of jumping straight into it, I'd struggle because I'd probably have to cancel a few shows here. Uh, but if it was, if it does, if it, if it was like say January next year, we want to take you on tour, I would, I would do it. I would one hundred percent jump into it. I would, um, I would do it. I would try my hardest to find someone else to do this show because this show you could, you could take any magician and kind of pop them in here, uh, kind of tell them the ropes, tell them how to serve the drinks and stuff like that. And, but they they could do their own material, you know. As long as they do, rather than just putting the cards in the pocket, have them on the shelf and stuff, like they could do their own material and effectively, essentially, do a different show to me, which is great. Uh, I, I I teach them a few of the things that I do downstairs because I think there's a few things downstairs that kind of work really well with the show, and a lot of people come back to see. Um, so yeah, I, I would I would I would try my hardest to find someone else to do this if that came along. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those things that I I would I, I just I would take it as as it goes. You know, I'm not actively looking for that sort of thing, but if the opportunity came along, I, I, I would take it 100%. Yeah. One last question on that. You, mm -hmm. you are obviously a very creative person because you've talked several times in this interview about, hey, I've got this piece that I've created for this show, which is absolutely yeah. perfect. Uh, and you've been uh, uh, working, or you have worked at a magic shop for years, so you've seen how many new tricks come out all the time. Yeah. Have you ever had an inclination of taking that creativity and using it to create a trick or have you got any aspirations of lecturing uh, because we've talked what's really interesting is a lot of the time when i interview people on talk magic it's people that are very well known within the magic community it's people that have this profile within the magic community oh this person is amazing because they lecture all over the world this person's amazing because they've bought out 30 or 40 tricks yeah you're kind of like the best kept secrets in magic in that a a lot of what your success has come away from the magic community and it's more what what you're doing for yourself and the business that you've set up for yourself as opposed to what's happening in the magic community was that yeah. by design um or and and uh, do you have any you know are, are we going to be seeing you entering competitions in the future or putting a lecture together or are you just happy doing it the way you're doing it so I'm happy doing it the way I'm doing it. The um, I, I do want more magicians to know about it. I, I really want I, I really want more magicians to kind of know about magic. I want them to come. To be honest, I really I really want uh, magicians to come and just see it because I've had a few magicians before and they they just they love it. They love the they love looking around. I mean, like just on the wall, there's just so much. You're surrounded by the art of magic in this room. There's so much going on. 
constantly. So I really want magicians to see it um, and just, just chat to them and, and just get feedback on the show as well. You know, like some of the best ideas have come from other magicians who've been to the show and they've been like, oh, why don't you do this? And like, that's genius. Why didn't I think of that? You know, that sort of thing. Um, in terms of like lecturing and stuff, I, I don't. So, yeah, so there's a few things that I've created in the show, but I, I'm not. I haven't really created, I'm not very good at creating a brand new effect. I'm, 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 I'm much better at taking an effect and adding a routine to it or like mm. adding a story to it or adding, like that's where it kind of I lie. So I don't really have anything that's, that's brand new, but, but there's a lot of things that like I've taken something and, and made it my own or made it fit the magic corner or, or put a nice story to it and that sort of thing. So yeah, so if I if, say I was to lecture, it would be more along the opening your own venue sort of side of the business side of things. I feel like that's why I could probably give more insight on rather than kind of like material and, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, there's yeah, so yeah, there's a few things downstairs that I do in the show that are, um, I think magicians would just kind of come and they, it's not something they haven't seen before, but it's something they can see and kind of really appreciate how the, the thought that's gone into that sort of routine mm. if that kind of just so that it fits the room and it makes sense and you know that even just the little things like where i'm standing like where the misdirection is and, and just just little things like that that come over time with doing this show like you know three you know ten times a week just little things like little subtleties um i, th I think magicians would have, would would really appreciate if they came to see the show well, yeah. before we carry on, if, if yeah. any magicians are watching this and they want to come, they find themselves in and around the Durham area and they want to come and watch the show, can you tell me the website and, and, and yeah, how absolutely. to uh, So if you just go to themagiccorner.co.uk, uh, it takes you to kind of like my website and the Magic Corner website. It's, it's all kind of combined. Uh, so yeah, just go to the Magic Corner uh, page and then there's just a booking page on there and, and you, you just, you can scroll through all the dates. Uh, you can scroll through, uh, if you're on a desktop, there's like, it's it's green, yellow or red. If it's red, it's it's all the 10 tickets are sold. If it's yellow, there's a few tickets left. Uh, if it's green, that means all 10 are available. So you can kind of book out the whole thing and, and reserve it for yourself if you want. Um, so yeah, uh, or just drop me an email. You know, I, I, I do everything, man I can do everything manually or give us a ring. Uh, I, can, I can do everything and, manually as well. The, the, the next question on that, is um obviously you've talked about how you do close-up and you've never really performed for kids yes. Are kids, is it a family show are kids invited it, yeah. yeah yeah it's a family show so the, the beauty of the show actually it, it just works for anyone really um i've had kids who so the, the recommended age is eight plus but i've had six year old six year olds who have come to the show and, and enjoyed it just as much as the adults you know it's it's more of a recommendation it doesn't it's just the main thing for it is there's a lot of there's a lot of uh interactive aspects of the show there's a lot of every there's a there's a point where everyone picks a deck of cards and they, they're using these cards so a six-year-old would kind of struggle to to use these cards and but it, it's very it's very much a thinker's show like it's not a it's not a visual show it's very much a, a sort of like influencing sort of thinking sort of story show so I, I often think a younger kid wouldn't gain as much from it if you, if you know what i mean there's no like there's no fancy sort of there's a few visual aspects in the show but uh yeah, that's kind of what I'm aiming for now, actually. It's, it's just the magic. I'm trying to make it... So I feel really happy with the show and the magic that's in it. The main goal right now is to just try and make it more theatrical. So I'm looking into adding some lighting downstairs to add, like, little spotlight moments and, and changing the colour of the room and stuff like that. Uh, I really want to do something with UV. I'm not really sure what yet, but something. Um, and, yeah, just just like... And, and I've added, like, little music, like, cues and stuff uh, over time. But yeah. So, yeah, it works for everyone. Uh, there's... If, if, there's a few reviews that kind of go in on the whole, like we, we came as a family, we had an eight year old and an 80 year old and they both enjoyed it as much as each, as each other. So it really, it really is for anyone. Yeah. I've had a few kids parties as well. So like, you know, one adult and nine kids in this room and it's, 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 it's great. It's wow. Kind of, yeah. yeah. So it doesn't, it literally works for anyone. I might have to tweak the shows ever so slightly just to make sure like, uh, just the, you know, what I say, just the wording and just, you know, as you do, you just kind of adjust the way you perform. And, and is it open in the week as well? Yeah, so I do Wednesday to Sunday. Um, and then the, the Wednesday and Thursday, they're kind of hit or miss. Sometimes I'll have one, sometimes I'll have three. Uh, yeah, sometimes I'll have a show for just four people. You know, can happen. But that's, Which, uh, that's it's, I imagine that's it's, a club one. It's, it's fun. To be fair, <laughs> when, it's, when, it's, when it's four, you do just, I just change it so that I'm 
and essentially just having this conversation with these four people for an hour and a half rather than standing in front doing the show it's like i just sit down next to them like let's do this you know that sort of thing and it's it's, it's a lot of fun yeah fantastic that's amazing wow very very impressed you said you were going to be able to show us around could we have a quick yes. look okay. yes what i'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm, i think i'm going to switch this over to my phone and i'll show you as much as i can because i think i can do that i tested this yesterday so it should work but this okay. is this is upstairs uh let me switch this okay so yeah we're okay good. can you see me we're good i'll turn it this yep. way as well so you can see me all right so essentially this is the gate to come in Flip this around there we go all right so i don't know if i can how far i can take you out oh the address is 19 and a half old elvet oh very cool 19 and a half i hope this doesn't lose thingy but this is the gate to come in yep that's great, great. oh look at that so it's it's on the corner it's on a corner in durham uh, and then this is the gate. So the gate opens uh, about 15 minutes before the show starts. And we they come in. This is what it looks like when you come in. There's a little coat hanger. And you can put your coat up. And then essentially there's some, it's always jazz. I go down the route of smooth jazz all the time. So smooth jazz playing. Uh, and then this is essentially uh, room number one. So there's three seats there, three seats here, two seats there and two, two high seats there. And it, it, it forms like this little semicircle. Uh, and then I do the performance in this middle space here. Um, but yeah, this is, I'll show you around. It's kind of like the room. Uh, so it's got menus as well. So these are the drinks and stuff. Oh, that's great. Um, just, just little things like that's a little rabbit lamp, which I love. <laughs> you know, little things like that. Uh, I'll open the hatch in a second. And then uh, this is, and then that's, um, you know, the slow dance feathers. Yes. Always a nice icebreaker. You know, it can get awkward when people come in. You know, they're kind of sat here. They don't really know what's going on. Uh, let me just, I'm just going to leave you there for just two seconds. And that looked like the Blake Voigt um, Vanishing Ink artwork on the wall back there for Abracadabra. The, uh, I think it's Blake Voigt's uh, Abracadabra sign. Uh, so this is the bar essentially when it opens. That's what it looks like in there, which I've, I've actually only recently done up. Um, like that so i i essentially stand here and serve the drinks but i also start the show here uh so i do like a um a chop cup routine uh stuff with cards and uh, one of my favorite tricks that i'm doing at the moment is called um oh god i'm gonna get this wrong i think it's called shake shuffle and twist oh wow okay uh I, so it, um i can't remember who it's by but it's in a, it's, it was in the jinx magazine a while back uh, essentially, you mess up a deck of cards inside of a cocktail shaker, uh, and then you kind of restore them, which is really cool inside the cocktail shaker. But yeah, so that's the that's the bar. Uh, so I serve oh, the drinks there. Like a, that sounds like a Steve Bedwell routine. Steve Bedwell, that's it. Yes, that's the one. Well, uh, I think it's called, I think it's called shake shake shuffle and twist or something like that. Uh, he he ended up doing it with a pop uh, with a pop noodle calendar. <laughs> that's well. right. He gets two pop noodles and pops them together. That's the one. Yeah. So I do it inside of a cocktail shaker. Um, and uh, when I open the cocktail shaker, there's loads of smoke that pours out as well. Just a little theater. It, does, it adds nothing, but it looks great when it when it when I open it. So yeah, so this is uh, room one, and everyone comes through here. Then the second room is through here. So you have a secret door. Oh, I do. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Just like that. So that's room one, just there, and then room two. So we have an interval in here, and then we take people downstairs. Everyone sits down here. There's a few like things on the wall. Wow, look at uh, it. And this is uh this is the um parlor room, I guess you should I could say. Wow. Uh, and then this this is where we can really kind of like hone in, like do like the more theatrical things and just things happen. So in in Halloween. If you can imagine this room, but with a with a big table in the middle, and everyone sits around it, we do like this this seance right here, uh, when you know with the candles and stuff. And it, it is it is quite. It's, do you know what? It's funny because I never liked the spooky side of magic until until I started doing it. But as soon as I had this place, and you just look down there, it was just born for a seance. You know, it was just made for a seance. So yeah, so you come down here. This is where everyone sits for the second part. This is one of my favorite things I'm doing at the moment. Um, uh, ge geometric, which uh which is oh, it's oh, just yeah. great um and then yeah so just a little stained glass and yeah just i love the candles some books on there some cards so every, everyone picks a deck of cards from here 
for their own trick, um, which is fun. It's just some things on here, just little things. And uh, yeah, just through here, it's just, a, it's just a bathroom, really. That's me. And it's just a toilet in there. But yeah. Really, you really thought this through. Oh, uh, yeah. And it, it's one of those things that I'm, I'm happy to constantly improve as well. So I'm kind of always throwing money at it just to try, just to try and like the candles were like an addition, like, like, I don't know, six months ago, but they've really added to this room and, and just, yeah, just little, just little things, just trying to make it as, just trying to, trying to improve it as much as possible. This is a, this is a drawing, uh, a drawing that a friend of mine, so this is all done in Sharpie. And a oh, friend wow. of mine did, and it's of, it's of the gate outside. Um, it's all done in loads of little dots. I don't really know if you can see them, it's quite dark in here, but just essentially loads of little dots like that. Um, but it creates this so that a friend of mine did that and I, I love it just it really adds and just yeah just little things so this is a uh, this is where it all all takes place and then they come back upstairs at the end and then yeah say the goodbye get the coats and yeah that's it that is incredible i love everything about this space it's honestly it's perfect so this wasn't here this wall uh when i when it first came in um this was all bare this was a window and a storage room and then that that was, it didn't exist. It was all kind of like one room that just went down. Um, so what I did was we built the wall here and added the bookshelf and just kind of separated it into the two rooms. Because mm. um, I, I don't know, I just really like the... Uh, you no, know, it's great. I really like the um, the difference in the... Uh, I really like the difference in uh, the two halves. Like the first half is very much very informal. It's very... Almost as if you're you're watching a magician at a bar, you know, and then the downstairs, you can, it, it's more like this. Oh, this feels like a magic show, you know, that sort of thing. It, it, just looking around it, there, everything feels like really special. Like they're they're almost getting a peek behind the curtain of stuff that they're not yeah. really meant to see. It's it's, it's you know, it's one of those things that I, I just think like when you if you can do magic magic is meant to be seen close up you know it's 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 how it, it's probably how it was designed and stuff so being able to like allow them to be so close to everything at all times you know like, I, no sleep i don't wear sleeves in the show <laughs> those people go and say he's not even wearing sleeves i'm like yeah. um i like, don't wear sleeves or anything so it, it is just it's, it's allowing people yeah as you say just allowing people to be that close to the magic and and really, really experience it because every there's only ten people per show, so everyone is involved at least at least once in the show. Um, so yeah, but yeah, no, just, yeah, as you say, yeah, it's almost giving them a sneak peek. And I like that. It's incredible! See? It's absolutely incredible. I'm definitely going to be coming up and watching your show. Um, great, Tom. It, yeah, and and very quickly because obviously we've got to wrap this up in a second. Um, very quickly. How different is your Edinburgh? Fr are you running uh, for people that are going up to Edinburgh this year that, that you want to come and see some magic? Can you tell us a little bit about about the show and how how different is it? Because obviously it's a stage show versus a close up show. Um, how different is it to what you've described that happens at the Magic Corner? And um, so yeah, the, so my show at Edinburgh is it's, it's there's I think a few things that are similar to Magic Corner, like a few routines I do in here that I'm taking into that show as well. But generally, it's, it's a different show. It's a, I, what I wanted to do was take a show to Edinburgh that's, that's uh, just a bit different. So I'm, I'm really playing on the whole theatrical side of, of magic, if I can. So I've, I've built a set uh, with my friend. Um, we built this um, we built this uh, bedroom, like a childhood bedroom. But we've actually got like flats. So two flats that are next to each other. It's got like the, the Toy Story-esque sort of like... Um, uh, wallpaper to it and stuff you know like the little clouds and stuff so we really made it like this kind of like childhood bedroom and the whole show is essentially what it's like to grow up as a magician in the 21st century that's kind of like the whole ploy of the show and um, so there's a, so there's a lot of theatrical moments like so I've, i i i mean luckily found a venue that allows uh a set because a lot of venues don't they, they don't they don't have the storage for it but fortunately i found a venue that does um so so it's it's not it's not a mass venue so i think it's a 90 seater little um lecture theater but they're, they're, they're blacking it all out so it's, it is it, it has that like sort of like black box stage sort of feel to it uh we build the set so the set's kind of ready to go um and the main thing about the, the edinburgh show is just the theatrics which we try i'm trying to make the the show just more theatrical so utilize your blackouts your spotlights your different kind of lighting utilize the um the set as much as possible so uh the, the whole hopeful goal is even though the, the set the wallpaper is a sky 
at one point in the show, um, I want little LEDs to come on so it looks like the night sky, so it changes from day to night, and just just really play on with that, just just to add to the magic. I think I think going down the theatrical route is is is, is just such a nice, it's such a great thing for magic. Um, you guys, black elves. There's a, there's a there's a Cluedo routine where I'm like dressed as a detective and I have a torch. And it's black, pitch black in the room, and I'm like in the audience, like following this torch, throwing a balloon out. And so yeah, so I really, really, really want to make it as, as theatrical as possible. So yeah, so I feel like I feel like Grow Up Magic Man. It, it's it's quite a special show for me. Uh, I really, really, really enjoy doing it, and I really, I'm really, really happy with it where it's at the moment. Uh, I'm tweaking it ever so slightly because it was uh, when I did it in Durham, it was kind of venue specific. There was a few things that only worked in that venue so i'm going to tweak it slightly but generally it'll be it'll be the same but yeah so are you there for the whole run of the fringe are you there for the whole of august yeah, doing the, the 2nd of august till the 24th of august uh it's with greenside venues on george street it's in the uh the royal society venombrook building it's a really big building on george street um and uh yeah so i'm in there so i think i'm in the, the forest theater which is really Brilliant. fun back and, really and what's the name of the show so that people can get tickets and where can they get tickets from? So tickets aren't available just yet, but they will be up soon. But the show's called Grow Up, Grow Up Magic Man. Uh, so it has two two kind of looks at it. It's it's a uh, Grow Up Magic Man in, in terms of like you know when you're when you when you want to be a magician, a lot of people tell you to grow up, uh, which is uh, which is like what every magician gets when when you tell people you're a magician you know that's not a real job sort of thing and uh the other point is the other way of looking at the name is um it's it's growing up as a magician what it's actually like growing up as a magician so there's kind of the two ways to it uh of looking at it but yeah so it's good grow up magic band uh I, I don't know when tickets go up i've, I've registered and stuff it's, i think it's like the next few weeks or something so they'll hopefully go up, be up soon um but yeah so fingers crossed I, the main reason for edinburgh as well i went last year but didn't take a show and uh Fortunately, managed to um, get a, a small spot. Tom Brace allowed me a, a small spot on his late night magic show, uh, and uh, I loved it. And I just loved the atmosphere, the the, just the community, the everything. I just fell in love. I love Edinburgh. To be honest, I'd live in Edinburgh if it wasn't so far away from everything else. I love Edinburgh. With I love it so much. So yeah, just just to be there for a month is great. So I'm doing the second till the twenty fourth of August. I think three weeks. Well, it looks like Edinburgh is going to be a place that you have to take the magic room to when you start franchising it. The magic corner when you start franchising it. Yeah, hundred percent. I think I think Edinburgh is definitely up there. Any any Harry Potter esque city will do. You know, Durham. You know, um, I don't know if you know, but uh, Harry Potter was filmed at the Cathedral in Durham. Um, so 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 there's a lot of like there's a lot of tur Durham tourists. Uh, sorry, Harry Potter tourists who come to Durham, um, which is great. And uh, obviously York has the shambles. Edinburgh has. Just Edinburgh is just it's Hogwarts. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think any anywhere like that would be great. So fingers crossed one day. That's fantastic. And if people want to get tickets to come and see you at the Magic Corner, once again, it's www.themagiccorner.co.uk, and you've got all of the dates, and you can see how many tickets are left, and you can go on and book, and you're open on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, and yeah, just book your slot, come up. Let me know if, if if you're a magician and you come and drop me a message. I'd like to know before you come, just so I can take well, the show. You know, Newcastle is such a the, the Newcastle area is such a great place to go. You've got you, you've got Magic Box, which is one of the best magic shops. I mean, the theater that they've got there and everything, the new building that they're in is just incredible. Same, same with Magic Box, Graham's constantly uh, trying to improve it as well. So, like even the theater, I think last time you came, it looks completely different now. But, you know, we've added like a projector and just just like add, adding stuff as, as you go and just trying to make it better. I know that's uh, that's the ultimate goal. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it looks like Newcastle Durham is becoming the mecca for magic right now, which is really exciting. And you you know what, Tom? Thank you so much for jumping on here. I know how busy you are. Uh, you've got shows today, I'm assuming, because it's a Thursday. So I really appreciate you taking time out to be able to do this and. I'm blown away with what you've achieved Thank at the you. age of 24, everything that you've done, everything that you've got lined up, you genuinely are. And I'm not just saying this, you genuinely are an inspiration. So congratulations. What you've done is really hard and not a lot of people have been able to do that. And you have, and it's exceptional. It really is great. Appreciate that a lot. Thank you for having me. It's, it's been great. And, and thank you, genuinely. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. I want everybody that's watched this interview to do three things. First of all, leave a comment down below. Let, uh, let Tom know what you thought of the interview. 
Uh, and then secondly, if you find yourself up at Edinburgh this year, go and see Tom Show. If you find yourself anywhere near the Durham or Newcastle area, go and see uh, uh, the Magic Corner. And finally, keep an eye on Tom's socials, because if he does get to a point soon where um, he's franchising, I know a lot of magicians that would jump at a chat. Well, hang on. You can have your own venue and just work and, and I'll give you the blueprint and you just have to do it. I think that's an incredible opportunity for a lot of magicians. And I think you're onto an absolute winner. I know a bit about franchising and Tom, I think that that is an incredible business idea. I think you're, I think you're onto a winner there. That's the, that is the goal. It's the goal. Hopefully we'll see. Amazing, man. That's amazing. Guys, leave a comment down below. Let Tom know what you thought of the interview. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I'll be back again next week, but one more time on behalf of, uh, on, on, on behalf of Tom Bolton and the magic corner. Thank you so much. We'll see you again. Tom, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.